Thanks for tuning in to Unclogged, a Zoom Drain podcast. We've got a special episode for you today as we've invited our friend and fellow franchisee, Dennis the Apprentice, to dig deep on the humble beginnings of being an apprentice and how that translates into a successful career. You can find Dennis the Apprentice on Instagram and on his podcast, Behind the Windshield. So let's run it. Hi, Dennis. Hi. I am so glad you're here. Well, I'm glad that we're doing this podcast because you've been talking about it for a very long time, and it's you're making it happen, and it's great. And something cool about you is three years ago, I, I was trying to figure out what I could consistently do. Right. And I decided I could do a one minute because there was always something crazy going on at work. So I shot that video. I didn't watch it. I posted it. And OG Plum God linked it. You were my first <laughs> link. Did you know that? I did not know that. You were my first link. Well, that is very sweet. And I'm like, OG Plum God, who's this? I did. I remember it when I met you. I'm like, what does OG stand for? Like, I didn't even know what that Original. meant. Original. Original. Yeah. 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 And I didn't even know your name for a while either. I just knew you as Plum God. Yeah. And I was like, man, that's ballsy to call yourself Plum God. Like, <laughs> who's got... Jeez. Well, I, uh, I recently shared the story of Plum God um, on a live feed or something that I did. And I would love to clarify it because, uh, you know, people are sometimes when they hear the name, they're like, oh, hey, this guy is arrogant about what he does and stuff like that. For one, we should all be proud of what we do. For sure. Um, and, and proud of what you've accomplished. And to me, the term Plum God was something to uplift myself, uh, but not just me, other people, but I needed something in my life and plumbing was it for me. And it guided me to the man I am and to the professional I am and all that. And so that is why I like Plum God. And because it's gotten me to where I am today, uh, nothing else but pure ambition and this this career has gotten me to where I am. So. Direction. Direction. It's so giving me all direction. Look, yeah, we're all trying absolutely. to figure out like, we're directionless at, at some point, yeah. right? We go to a crossroads and we're like, what do we do? Right. You know, I got three different ways ahead of me and one behind. Uh, where, where do I take this? Right. And you're hoping and praying that you got the right step. You took right, the right step, yeah, right? Exactly. It's like, I'm going to go this way. What happens? Yep. Right. So how, how, did, you find, how did you find plumbing? Oh, wow. Um, so I used to be a musician. Okay. And um, I was broke and poor and living wherever I can, and <laughs> just like most musicians do. Mm -hmm. And my friend was like, dude, why don't you just get a job with my brother? And I'm like, I'm like, what does he do? I'm like, oh, that's the guy that goes to all the parties in his work uniform, and he's on call all the time. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to name drop him, John Strand, and, uh, and I can get into that on another story, but he was He's the most. He's the best liner guy I've ever met in my life. Uh, mm -hmm. Perma liner, like OG per perma liner guy, wow. uh, for uh, Rescue Rooter, and okay. just slays it. Um, or used to. I haven't talked to him in a while, but yeah. So, anyways, uh, I called him and he's like, "John, I can get you a job literally as soon as you come in." I'm like, "Really?" I'm like, "Okay, we can do this." So I go down there and they're like, "You're hired." I'm like, damn, that was easy. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's see how this goes. Right. So, uh, you know, they, they put me in a truck with, with a guy. And at the time, Rescue Rooter um, was hiring a bunch of young guys, 25 and under. Mm -hmm. And they were doing this thing where they were trying to figure out if this would work, just hiring these guys that, that like literally don't know nothing. We're gonna train the heck out of them like you guys do. And um, let's see if they stick. Um, and stick with the game and, mm -hmm. and want to continue with it. And um, <laughs> out of like, I think 15 guys, by the end of the first year, there was only three of us left. And uh, those three people, uh, two of those people still work there. Right. And I had left and gone to do my adventure. Right. You know? um, so it worked. It worked. Right. That's better than... It worked, but yeah. that was three out of 15 or 20 guys. I mean, so there's the ratio. Like, it's, it's yeah. hard to uh, find these people that want to stick with it. But 
I think if you have the right mentors and the right guidance um, and the right leadership in place, it will retain and um, people are going to enjoy, you, you gotta enjoy where you work. For sure. And you have to find somebody that's going to help you enjoy it mm -hmm. and uh, you need to build relationships. And I, honestly, uh, what I loved about what we were doing is that um, I am very quick-witted and I would master anything that I went into really quick. And plumbing is like a never-ending. Like, we're trying to find something new all the time. It's constant, and, yeah. and get better all the time. Right. And it's constantly intrigued me and I've never gotten sick of it. Right. And that's a hard thing for me. Right. Uh, ADD, uh, I, you know, I have a hard time sticking with anything for very long and Plumbing's really done it for me. The physical work, the uh, the different realms of learning how to communicate with customers, uh, and now my employees. That's a whole nother mm -hmm. level of things, you know. So, yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. And uh, and after after like six months to eight months, they just like literally threw keys at me, and they're like, "Roll," awesome. and I was like, "All right." I don't know anything. <laughs> I yeah. still didn't know anything at the time. <laughs> Very cool. So what was, uh, what was the key to you sticking it out? How, how are you one of three out of 15? That's a really good question. I've never been asked that before. And I don't, yes. I don't understand why these other people didn't see the value in it. Right. But I think, I think part of it is that it is hard work. Mm -hmm. And you do have to be committed to learning. You have to be interested, right? And, and you have to want to better yourself. And if you don't want to better yourself, then you're going to find something that's going to meet with you. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I mean. That's I think that's what we all want. We want we want everyone to be happy and find what you want. And but as a business owner, you want them to find that out as fast as possible. Because uh, and and it's hard to say. It's it's bad to say that. But I want you to figure this out right now because we invest a lot of time totally. and a lot of money. Um, into getting them to start producing. So I think also as uh, why I stuck it out is because um, I saw the value they were putting into me. Mm -hmm. I really did. And um, like, I think for me, the communication aspect was a really big thing. Not only that is the camaraderie between the groups. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, I was kind of like an outcast because um, I was more ambitious than literally everyone around me. And by the end of my first year, I was the top dog. How were you, how did you show your ambition? How did it? Well, what gave me ambition is my family, my young family, Okay. you know, um, and me trying to f make my way as a man. I mean, really. And honestly- Proving yourself? Proving to yourself what yeah. you, who you are and who you're gonna be. And I think that having the, um, giving me keys and giving me that responsibility was a big deal to me. And I wanted to prove that I can be this responsible adult to do these things. I don't, I don't know, that sounds ridiculous. But, yeah, what age, what age? But I was 23, I 23? think. 23? 22, okay. 23 when I got in. Yeah. Um, so I, I wish that I found it sooner because I wouldn't, I, I would be even further in my career. Sure. And I'm 38 right now and I've had my business for almost 10 years. So it's like, it's, I don't know, it's, it's really awesome. And I love the aspect that anybody can do this. Um, mm -hmm. And my ambition came obviously with money too. Uh, you know, I saw the money coming in and the money, it, you can't shy from money when it's presenting no. itself. I mean, you'd be yeah. a fool to run away from it. You were already married at the time? Um, I was not married okay. at the time. Actually, I was going through a really rough, rough time in my life when I found plumbing. Um, and I just found out that I had a son Oh wow! With my ex-wife. Oh wow! So that's an interesting story there. But uh, so I had just become a father, and that was what inspired me to get a job too, and like sure. get my stuff together, and like really find something for my family that we can grow with, and uh, and they can they can depend on me. There's you know? there's something about having a kid that broadens your shoulders. Oh yeah, uh, I want to hire people with kids. Yeah, like. There's something, I, I can't explain it, but there's something that you bear up, right? Yes. You bear up under that burden and well, I can't explain it. Well, let's face it, some people do. Some people don't. You know what, I love the aspect of leadership uh, because 
you get to see these young families grow as business owners, yeah. and you get a chance to not just help your family, but to help other families grow. Right. And I think that's really important as a business owner to show um, your employees that you actually care, and you want to see the best version of them um, with not just them in as individuals, but as a family. And I want to see them succeed. I want to see them buy their first house. I want to see them get that new SUV. I want to see them do these amazing things. I got an apprentice right now. Uh, he started with me when he was 17 and then um, he left out of state and worked for another company. I'm not going to name because I can talk about it all day long, but he is amazing and he's a young dude and he's hungry and I want him to buy his first house and he's so hungry to get that house and I want him to be, I'm, he's going to get it. And now's the time too. And I'm gonna show him to get it, yeah. how to get it. Yeah. And he's got the ambition and the drive and that, it, and I don't know how one finds ambition and drive but if you don't have it, this is not for you in right. my opinion. Right. Because like I said, it's an, uh, it's an evolution of your career uh, constantly you have to change and, and learn more and more and more if you want to be successful uh, in servicing your customers, you know? Right. So how does he show you as he's ambitious? Like, is he on time or does he come to training or what, what, what does he do that's got you so turned on about this kid? Um, he's happy to come to work. Happy? He smiles all, and that's, that's the happiness, right? Yeah, smiles. Um, he asks questions. Ask questions. You say that a lot. Mm -hmm. He asks a lot of questions and he wants to find the right answers. And he doesn't ask the same person. And I think that is important too, is to not always go to the one person for these, these thoughts and theories about how we can accomplish something. It's good to veer off to different people. Right. Because you get different perspectives. Everyone right. does something different. And uh, so that's definitely one thing that I see him do, and he never gives up. He never stops working, um, and he takes the initiative. Like, right now, uh, I'm out here, right? I had a job on Monday that was scheduled for myself to do, mm -hmm. and yes, I'm still in the field. I love being in the field, and I don't think I can get out at the moment, because I just love it. I love what I do, so it's yeah. hard for me to pull out of it. Yeah. But um, I was like, hey, dude, I have a job on the board for Monday. It's a sink install, um, three faucets, and we're connecting the waste from all the sinks. Um, and I'm like, it's probably gonna take you around four to six hours to get done. Do you mind coming in on Monday? It was his day off. I'm like, if you come in and cover my job, then I'll let you take Saturday off and we'll just close on Saturday. He's like, John, I'm here to make money. I'll work six days. I'm like, that's what's up. And awesome. so his commitment level makes my commitment level even higher. To him. To him, right? Yes. Yeah. So if I see that, I'm like, dude, I'm giving this guy everything. Right. Like if right. I sell a big job, he's getting that job. I don't want it. I want him to get it and be hungry and still stay hungry and see his true potential in this career because he's got an amazing one. I think that's, that's, that's so much of my message is when you show up as an apprentice and do really well and show that you're interested, the masters, the owners, master plumbers, they're all looking for a legacy to leave with somebody. Yeah. Like, please love this career as much as I do. Yeah. And when they show up, then we pay more attention to them, yep. which accelerates their career, right? You know what I love is that I've had so many apprentices over the years, and the guys that I spent the most time with, they're still doing it, and they're still grinding them. And, and half of those people are starting their own businesses. Right. And I love seeing that. And they hit me up and be like, dude, I'm rocking. This is what we're doing. Da, da, da. And I always help them out as much as I can. And right. I, always, I always reach out to them more than they reach out to me because I want them to know how proud I am of them right. on, on, on their continued success in their career. Um, and a lot of, uh, it's, this is really messed up to say, but a lot of um, families, in the United States don't know who they are. And I think that plumbing can definitely give a, found, a, found, a family's foundation mm -hmm. and an ongoing legacy that can build long wealth, you know, wealth, not just, you know, short-term money, so. I just had Pro Drains on, uh, Rob with Pro Drains, and that yeah. was his thing, is legacy wealth. Yeah. And I, th I think that's something we need to talk about more. We're starting to get these apprentices making really good money, and they, we don't teach them what to do with it. Right. Right? Like, no one's ever taught anybody what to do with money. That's, like, that's the secret. But we actually, you know, in the trades, the cool thing is we actually make money. We take parts and our experience, mix them together, right. 
and out comes more, way more money mm -hmm. than we put in. But then there's no effort about, okay, what to do with the money once we got it. Yeah, well, the world we live in, they don't want us to be educated in the money that we have to uh, create wealth. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, that, sorry, that's politics. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> let's say all that. I think there's a number of us that agree. <laughs> We're all going, yeah, let's talk about that. That's the next episode. Uh, I'd love to hear about a mentor of yours that you'd like to thank in oh, the past that helped uh, you out. That Tom Byers. Tom uh, Byers? Tom Byers. Tom Byers. Yep. He was uh, my mentor. He actually signed off for my license and my journeyman hours and all that. So I definitely give a lot to him. He's taught me so much stuff. And how, how, he, did, how did he treat you that you liked him? He, um, he took me in when I was having the worst days of my life. Like the worst days. So filled with anxiety. And like I had a lot on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And as being the top producer of the business, I took it on myself that it's my job to provide for all this, all the other staff so right. that we all have jobs. Right. And why would I do that at 25 years old at that time? Why mm -hmm. would I want that? I don't know. It's always just been in me. But right. Tom, one of the, the biggest things that he ever taught me, this is like the yeah. dumbest thing, but like it's impacted my life a lot. And I think about it, uh, I almost want to cry because I think about it and because uh, it's really, it's helped me with my anxiety. He's like, it's like, get in my office. I'm like, Shit, I'm in trouble. Uh, excuse my language, sorry. Yeah. Um, he's like, you know what you need to do? He's like, go to this address. It's park. I want you to go sit on this tree. And he's like, just go touch a tree, man. And uh, <laughs> I know that's so, it sounds so ridiculous, but it's an anxiety thing. And it's a relaxing thing. Grounding. Being, yeah, it's grounding. And that's exactly what you said. Dude, you need to ground yourself. And, and that's what our business does, though. It, it will throw us all over the place, and we need to find something that grounds us. And hopefully that grounding is, like I said, not drugs and right, the alcohol right. that can take us really fast. Um, but our families can ground mm -hmm. us, and mm -hmm. we need to really – learn how to focus on the families, and I hope business owners can teach the employees how to manage these bigger projects so that they can be off in a timely manner. And that's really what I'm trying to focus my crew on, is to set our goals for the day and abide by those goals and get it done and go home. Go home at five o'clock. I don't want you at my customer's house at 11 o'clock at night still struggling on and stuff. Neither does the customer. And, and neither does the customer. Yeah. We need a game plan each project and we need a team to make sure that this is all going to happen at these time timelines. And we're going to OT. What happens with that? Workman's comp goes up and all this crap comes into play with all that. And they're not healthy. They're not getting that family time to ground them. They're not, you know, so I think that uh, the older I get, the more important I see that, yes, the hustle is obviously vitally important to any business's business's success and the success in their own career, but learning how to manage that time correctly and giving them simple processes on these bigger projects to streamline their success and get that, get it done. Right. You right. know, rest is super important, right? Uh, absolutely. Like we're hearing that more and no, more. It's not just rest. It's love. Love yes. is the most important. Love. Yes. Okay. You taught me. I'm just, I'm discovering rest though. Cause I've always pushed hard. Right. And, uh, Sorry, no, you're right as well. But, but yeah, love is huge. Yeah. For sure. And that, that's what drives us, but that's also what's going to get us home. Yes. You know? Yes. So that we do rest. So we do rest in love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should end it right there. That's, a, that's awesome. Plumbers just came up with rest in love. Awesome. Thanks, John. Love you, bro.